Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much to everyone who's uh, already joining us in the chat that I see. Um, we are here to do the Book Troop live show for the month of May, where we read The Last Word by Taylor Adams. Ooh, <laughs> love that book of the month. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Um, and so, yeah, this was our book troop pick for the month of May. Um, very exciting stuff. Um, if you are just joining us, um, we are going to be doing spoiler free for the beginning of this. So if you have not read the book, um, no worries. We will warn you well before jumping into spoilers. Um, we're just going to be hanging out for a bit and introducing ourselves. This is my friend Riley, by the way. <laughs> um, would you maybe want to introduce yourself for anyone who doesn't know or isn't familiar with your channel? Um, Riley's channel will be linked down below, by the way, if you haven't seen her channel by the way so so i'm riley my channel is riley marie um if you've never watched one of my videos i read pretty widely but mostly romance horror fantasy i've really been in a fantasy mood lately so that's what i've been reading a lot of but yes. usually it's romance and horror and i do a lot of reading vlogs a lot of uh what else do i do mostly reading <laughs> vlogs <laughs> i love a vlog yes Oh my gosh, I love your reading vlogs too. They're always so great. Um, awesome. Well, thank you so much to everybody who's already joining us in the chat. Um, I appreciate you all for being here. Um, this book, um, maybe if you have read along with us this month, maybe you could put a blue heart in the chat just so I can get a visual on who's all here because they've read the book. And then maybe if you have not yet read it or haven't read it yet, maybe you can put a yellow heart just so I can get a little visual on who has all read it and who has not. And then while everybody's doing that, um, Riley, would you want to give maybe just like a really vague, like non-spoilery kind of description of like what this book is about or premise just so everyone can get an idea of like what, what, we, what we'll be talking about? All right. So this book is following a woman who is staying at this like Airbnb on the beach with her dog. And she's kind of living in isolation. She doesn't have a lot of human interactions with people. She really keeps to herself. Um, and the only like human connection she really has is with her neighbor. And they communicate by writing on whiteboards and like holding it up to the window. Very much Taylor Swift, you belong with me. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that was what I was picturing. Um, and then he recommends her to read this horror book that she ends up reading and hating. Um, so that prompts her to write a scathing one star review of the book. And the author ends up commenting and asking her to take it down, mm -hmm. uh, which she says no. And then he basically threatens her, like, if you know what's good for you, you're gonna take this down. And she still, she's like, no, I'm not doing that. And that sets off a series of events. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's kind of it. Did I leave anything out? <laughs> Oh, that was great. That was perfect. I love the Taylor Swift details, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, amazing. Well, thank you for that. And wow, there are so many blue hearts in this chat. I am overwhelmed with joy. So thank you all so much for reading along with us this month. Also, hello, Gavin. What's up? Um, wow, awesome. Okay, cool. Well, so maybe we should just jump right into ratings because I'm very curious. I feel like this one was a pretty mixed bag of people either really seem to be like loving this one or just hating it <laughs> in the discord at least um so i'm just curious to see how everyone you know ended up feeling about this one so if you did end up reading this month i would love to know your rating out of five stars um just in the chat if you could just put a rating out of five stars like how you felt about it and then while they're doing that um i don't know how you felt about this so i'm very <laughs> curious very curious to know um so would you want to let us know your rating and then maybe like briefly why that was your yeah. rating? um wait before i tell my rating i feel like it's important to know that i'm very picky with thrillers okay and <laughs> i think that there's only like four thrillers that i've ever given five stars to oh okay. um, i just i don't know thrillers either they really work for me or they don't yeah with that being said i gave this five stars <laughs> no way yeah. oh my gosh I, you had me so nervous when you were saying that i was like oh my gosh you hated it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i loved it oh my god I was impressed. I feel like it just had like all of the things that I love in thrillers. It all just perfectly lined up and it was so fun. And I had a great time. That's so exciting to hear. I was so nervous right there. Like legit thought you were going to be like, I absolutely hated it one star. Like what? Amazing. Wow. Well, that's, that's great. That's great for me to hear. I'm so glad. Um, wow. It seems like there's actually a lot of higher, more higher ratings um, from everyone than I thought there was going to be mm -hmm. for sure. 
Um, I do see a couple like two or like lower ratings as well, but for the most part, wow, I'm really impressed. Um, very cool. Yeah. So I think overall, um, I also really, really enjoyed this book. I think for me, it was about a four star, mm -hmm. uh, but I could be persuaded to like rate it higher <laughs> after this discussion just because it was so much fun. And I think that's the biggest thing with this book is that even though like, I mean, for me, the only reason why I didn't get a five star is because I found some of the ending to just get a little bit like I'm ready for things to wrap up or there was a lot of like extra, extra, extra like stuff at the end that I was just like, okay, like, I don't know about that, you know, but, um, but otherwise, like, I don't know, I just really had a good time with this. I thought the protagonist was actually like really cool and like really relatable in a lot of ways with like her, yeah. about her anxieties and um, just like her life you know, experiences. And, um, I also just loved the atmosphere in this book, like absolutely loved it. It was like so creepy and like weird. And I just love the, um, like feels like somebody's watching you kind of vibes that most of this had. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so that's awesome that we both ended up enjoying it. I, I was not expecting that because that is not always the case with my <laughs> live shows. So that is very cool. Um, do you mind if I ask, um, I know it's not totally relevant, but which other thrillers have been like five stars for you, if you know, like off the top of your head? Yeah, both of the Ashley Winstead ones. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, I, we both yeah. loved In My Dreams and Holy Nights. Yeah. And yeah. then They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. Yes. And then what else? I think those might be the only ones, actually. I, there yeah. is one more, but I think those are the main ones. Oh, Okay. Yeah, that's nice. I, I know like um, the Ashley Winstead gets very um, hit or miss with a lot of like thriller lovers. So mm -hmm. that's that's really cool that we both like that one a lot too. Um, yes. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, all right. Awesome. And then uh, one of the questions that I had before getting into spoilery things, which we kind of discussed this right before, but have you read this author's books before? Um, and I know you said no, right? You haven't read yeah. it any of his stuff. So after giving this one five stars, are you interested in picking up more from Taylor Adams? I am. I always wanted to read No Exit, but I made the mistake of watching the movie. Oh. First. I didn't know that it was like the movie of the book. I oh. forgot what the title was. So I just like watched the movie randomly. And then I realized it was the book. And I was like, well, it kind of like, I don't know if it ruined the book for me. Oh, so I've always wanted to read one of his books, but I was sad that I accidentally did that. <laughs> Interesting. I know. I wonder if, um, cause I feel like no exit, it might still be one of those stories where like you could still read the book after, even mm -hmm. after knowing some things and still really enjoy it. But, um, that is interesting. I wonder how it would be <laughs> like a different experience seeing the movie first. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like with me, with Taylor Adams, like No Exit has always been like one of my favorite thrillers of all time, just because it's one of those books that's like such a fast paced, like it's like literally one of the most fast paced thrillers that I've ever read. It's like, you know, it all takes place in one night kind of vibe, kind of like this one, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just so like intense the entire time, which I love with like the pacing of a thriller. Like I need it to be like high the whole time, you know, so um, so I always really love No Exit. And then his uh, second book that he came out with was called Hairpin Bridge that I think that came out last summer, if I'm remembering right, or the summer before. And that one was like a huge bummer for me. That one was like a two star. It was just like not my thing. So I was kind of nervous going into this one. Like I was hoping that this one would be more similar in vibes to No Exit than to Hairpin Bridge. And I really feel like it was, you know, I really feel like this, um, this book does remind me so much of No Exit in a lot of ways because of the like how fast paced it is and like the way it all takes place on one night. And it has like a similar, um, like the stakes just feel very high, kind mm -hmm. of like they did for No Exit. Um, did you like No Exit more than this one? I know. I don't know, to be honest. I, I feel like I would have to like think about it more. I feel like because I've loved No Exit for so many years, I feel like attached to it in a way, you know, but like, I don't know, like this was pretty up there. Like, I think this was really fun in the same ways. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, I agree. I think, I feel like Hairpin Bridge is definitely like his least popular <laughs> out of the I don't three. even know that I've heard of that one. <laughs> yeah, it was not like, it was not that great. And like, I saw a lot of people really not liking Hairpin Bridge. Whereas like a lot of people tend to love um, No Exit. So, oh, oh except for Casey, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, yeah, yeah, No Exit was fun. It is one of the better thrillers in my opinion, but um, awesome. Okay, and then um, I, uh, this was kind of like a fun, just kind of like story time I thought we could do because this book is based off of this girl who gives a book one star and then like gets into this debate with an author. I was just curious. I was like, 
thinking like, have you ever had this happen to you, you know, as a book reviewer? Cause like we are, you know, book tours is kind of our gig, you know, it's like what we do on the internet. So I was just curious, like, have you ever had this situation happen to you before where you give like a one star to a book and somebody reaches out and they're like, you need to take this down. I have, but it wasn't the author. It was the publisher. Oh. Oh my gosh. I'm not going to say which one, yeah. but it was for a popular book. And my review on Goodreads was the top review. And it was like a bad, like I ripped into this <laughs> book. I felt, I kind of felt bad. And they did ask me to take it down. And I did not. <laughs> oh my God. What did the, did they like email you or like how yeah. did that? Oh they God. emailed me. <laughs> no way. Were you just like, no, or did you just not respond? I didn't respond. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's wild. Yeah, I've never had an author like specifically reach out to me though. Yeah. Was that like recent or was that like a long time ago? No, that was a long time ago. Okay. Although I have had an author like a negative review on Goodreads, which just feels a little weird, but like. And... <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I actually had the same thing happen where it wasn't the author, but it was a publisher and it was like an indie publisher mm -hmm. and they were trying to use that like well, we're an indie publisher and this is really bad for us. And they were almost like gaslighting me in the email being like, since you didn't understand what you were getting yourself into or whatever, <laughs> because I think I said something along the lines in my review of like, oh, I kind of went in with the wrong expectation or something mm -hmm. like that. So then they were like trying to put it on me being like, since you went in with the wrong um, expectations, maybe you can just take this down. And I was like, what? <laughs> and like they had offered to send me the arc of the book and ah. Uh, it was so messy. I was like, no. <laughs> That's so weird. Both of us had a publisher do that. <laughs> I know. I know. And I totally relate to to the like author seeing your negative review thing. Like, oh my gosh, just last year I had, um, I was doing a video and I was like saying how I didn't like the book. And the author commented on the video and said, I would have sent you a signed copy of the book if you didn't hate it. Oh. Oh. I was like, no. <laughs> oh my God. I would die. <laughs> I know. I'm like, that's the thing is like, I, I feel like um, there really is like a readers, a readers space and like reviewer space. And like, I feel like a lot of times reader or like reviewers review books for other readers, you know, right. like it's usually not for the author or like whatever. So it's really weird when authors um, engage with negative reviews. <laughs> yeah. Um, it just, it makes it so uncomfortable for everyone, you know, because <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's not for you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like how wild is that? I kind of figured we might both have experience like experiences like this just because it's like once you get kind of a following online or you get arcs a lot, it's like it's bound to happen, right? Yeah, yeah. But it always is like weird. Yeah. I also I just remembered this. I had another experience where an author was complaining on their, I think it was on their Twitter or something about a review that I gave. But I gave a four star review, but I had just said something in it like why I didn't give it a five star. And they like just like focused on that and we're mad about it. <laughs> what? <laughs> I gave it four stars. What the heck? Oh my gosh. That's like almost worse because it's like it's a good review. Like yeah. just with it. <laughs> um yeah, I feel like that's like your worst nightmare as like a person who reviews things on the internet for somebody to like take it personal and like yeah. it's also rough because it's like, you know most of the time book reviews it's never personal it's just like it's the story it's yeah. not like an attack on the author themselves you know um exactly yeah there's a difference there is a difference mm -hmm. but yeah i think it's like it's people should have the right to like have their opinions about books without feeling like shit about it. <laughs> you know? um okay interesting yeah i thought that would make for a fun little conversation story time just because of the nature of this book and what yeah. it's about. Um, I, I just find it so ironic that we're getting a story from an author who's probably received a lot of one star books about, you know, yeah. this guy like essentially like stalking this girl because she wrote a one star, you know, book. It's just very, um, it's very meta mm -hmm. in that way. Like this whole book is just very meta. Um, so, yeah. Okay. I think I do want to jump into some spoilery things now, um, just because I feel like with a lot of the questions that I have, they could lean into spoilery territory. So I'd rather just be safe than accidentally spoil someone. So um, we will be jumping into spoilers now. So if you have not read the book, um, please, uh, you know, leave the chat. If you don't want spoilers, um, we're going to be spoiling from here on out. So um, I guess my first question was just um, how did you feel overall about like the writing style in this book, the pacing, the atmosphere, like what were your general feelings about it? 
Um, yeah, I loved the pacing and the writing. I thought like I read it in one sitting. I started it and just like stayed up at night reading it, which I don't know if that was the best decision <laughs> to read it, like, in the middle of the night because I freaked myself out a couple times. But it was such a quick read. And I loved the way that it was written with like what's actually happening and then the book that's like being written yeah. about this and oh. like going back and forth and seeing the difference. That was probably what kicked it up to five stars for me because I loved that style. I would agree for sure. Yeah. I thought that was so funny and so well done. Um, I love how like uh, even like the beginning, like the way the prologue starts with the end and mm -hmm. it's like she's reading the end of the book. I was like, oh, that's ironic that it like starts with the ending or whatever like I thought that was cool and then like yeah the freaking atmosphere in the beginning was so great like I loved the whole like them holding up messages to each other in the windows but then the mm -hmm. way he would like try to play games with her being like there's a man behind you or whatever like that was creepy I was like yeah what is <laughs> like why, why is he like this um but yeah I agree the whole um like there's almost at the end of like part one I think it is there's like a twist I guess where he says welcome to murder beach and then you realize like oh my god this is gonna be like his next <laughs> like book or whatever yeah. um which I thought was really cool like um and really interesting because then you think that like it's like almost like book within a book like that mm -hmm. trope where you kind of get his uh, like his excerpt from Murder Beach or like his story in between. And yeah, I totally agree. That was freaking hilarious. Like how it would be like, like in reality, it would be like, he screams like a little girl or whatever. And then like in his book version, it's like, he has a really high, exceptionally high pain tolerance. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God. There was like so many moments where he would like act like a little bitch in real life. And then like, he would be like trying to wing it as if he was like so tough. Yeah. Or um, like when she, when she like crushed his hand with the hammer or something and he was like, it didn't even hurt at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I know. And like how she would write in the window, she put amateur and then he, in the book, it's like, please don't kill me. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree. The, the timing, yeah. The timing mm -hmm. of the point of view switches was just everything. Like it was perfect and that's why i thought it was so um so like meta and so like self-aware and just like hilarious like i don't really know if i've ever read a book quite like this that does yeah. it that well like um, i was actually laughing i don't think i've ever read a thriller that made me laugh <laughs> i know i know i saw so many people be like really annoyed by this guy's like perspective when he kept calling himself like a sigma male or like whatever <laughs> like were you like super annoyed with it or did you just think it was like hilarious I just thought it was hilarious and I was like that like that is so realistic like this type of guy like that is what he would be writing and sounding like yes I know I agree like I because I could see how people would find it really annoying but I just personally thought it was so freaking funny like I was just cracking up the whole time because mm -hmm. uh, I just thought it was really entertaining and yeah because I agree like there are some guys out there that are just so like this that I could like easily picture it mm -hmm. And like same with his freaking sword like why? <laughs> like why does he have a sword like um, have you ever seen an author and like their author picture is just ridiculous i was imagining his author picture is like him with like his hat and his sword like, oh my <laughs> <laughs> the sword oh my god amazing <clears throat> i know the fake um acknowledgements also mm. threw me so much yeah. so close to the end of the book that i was like oh and then i was like wait <laughs> um did anyone else think the book within a book was not good? How he was, how he has a renowned author. I personally love the book within a book element of this book. Mm -hmm. um, I know it can probably be annoying for like some other people because maybe it gets like repetitive or something in a way, but I personally really loved it. Um, yeah, I loved it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Sigma male thing was just very funny. And I feel <laughs> like it's just, it's because you know, like there's a lot of douchey guys like that in real life that are very much like that. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, that's why it made it more entertaining. Um, I wanted to ask too, um, was there anything, so, like, so since you gave it five stars, was there anything that you ended up disliking about this book? So I know we talked about a lot of things we do like, but was there anything that you didn't like about it? Yeah, I think the only thing was it took me a little bit to get into it. Like I wasn't sucked in right away. I mean, I did read it in one night, so yeah. <laughs> I was super interested, but I think until there, I can't remember what it was, but there was one like part um I think it was I think it was when like part two when it was like excerpt from murder beach uh -huh. where I was like oh okay now I'm hooked but yeah. it took me a minute to get into it that's the only thing I think I did yeah 
I know I would agree. I think once it hit that part two and you kind of start to realize like what's going on, it's like, oh shit, okay. Like I'm like here for this. Um, <clears throat> I was curious too, with, like at the beginning of the book, were you like suspicious of Deke right away or did you like trust him at all? Or how did you feel about his character from the start? I did not trust him from the first yeah. page he was on. I actually wrote a note because there was this particular chapter in the beginning where she's talking about what she said in her review and she mm -hmm. said something like coincidences in fiction is lazy writing and then very shortly after that we learned that deke is the one who recommended this book to her yeah. and i was like that's a coincidence yeah i know i totally agree like from the moment it was like he recommended the book to her i was like shady okay yeah. like he's he's involved and then also when it said um he Oh God, what was it? There was like a few things right at the beginning that I was like, um, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like he recommended her the book. Oh yeah, and then he said he recognized the guy, mm -hmm. whatever that was like stalking the house or whatever. And I was like, why would he recognize him? And he was like, oh, he used to like stalk me and my children or whatever. I was like, yeah, sure, or whatever. Wow. And then like when you find out that he is a retired writer himself too, I was like, what? <laughs> like there's so many things. I was like, things are stacking up. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't trust this man. Um. <laughs> Yeah, he also kind of gave me creeper vibes just because he's like this older dude just like watching her through the window. All yeah. The time. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? Um, oh yeah, that too. He calls her Emma, but she doesn't remember telling mm -hmm. him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like there were so many red flags where I was like, oh uh, wait, what? Yeah, the fact that he recommended this book to her was a major red flag. <clears throat> so um, so yeah, and then let's see. Um, I did want to ask too, because I know with thrillers, sometimes we have characters that we really love and sometimes we don't, but did you have any like favorite characters in this story, whether it's because you actually like them or they were just entertaining to read about, or were there any characters that you like passionately disliked that like almost made it like worse of a book for you? Yeah, I loved the main character. I thought she was super interesting, especially yeah. with like how she had already been struggling with like maybe wanting to commit suicide and like she didn't have the strongest survival instincts at the moment yeah. so i thought that was just like really i don't know it was interesting i feel like that was a different kind of main character in a thriller to read about yeah um and i also felt like she had like a very realistic mix of making mistakes but then also coming up with like really clever things to do yeah um, Oh yeah, and space dog. I love the dog. <laughs> I literally had to ask someone to tell me what happens to the dog because I was like, I can't. I'm so stressed right now. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. I'm like, this dog has like nine lives, dude. Like, oh my god, this dog. <laughs> Dang. Um. Yeah, that's interesting. I know. I also really loved Emma. Like, I loved this protagonist. Um. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of times with thrillers like this, protagonists can be so like you either love them or you find them really annoying but I personally really loved Emma's character um I just found so much of her like dialogue to be very relatable like some of the stuff that she was talking about in the beginning about her like anxiety and her mm -hmm. like depression I just thought was like really relatable like um like there was a line that I underlined it was on page 34 when she said Emma doesn't like to be seen being seen burdens you with an image you have to maintain and just like some of her you know talk like that I was like wow like that's you know really interesting and really relatable and I agree I think because she's a character who is almost like she doesn't care if she dies mm -hmm. I do feel like that makes her an even more interesting character to follow because she's like he doesn't have anything over me you know right. like I don't care if I die so like she has nothing to lose essentially um, and so I agree that that definitely made her even more of an interest, interesting character, in my opinion. And I just, like, loved how, like, badass she was. And she was just mm -hmm. kind of smart. And, like, I appreciate that she's, like, one of those characters that's, like, oh, I'm not a fucking idiot. So as soon as I get the opportunity, I'm going to, like, try to kill you. You know, like, it's mm -hmm. like she wasn't doing any of that bullshit where it's like, oh, well. Like, she just didn't have any, like, um, I don't know. I just thought she was a really great character. Yeah. And also, like, she was pretty much doing everything to protect her dog, <laughs> which yeah. I was like, so relatable as a dog person. I'm like, yes. you cannot come for my dog. <laughs> no, that too. That too. That's what I mean. Like, she seemed like she was like, I'm only going back for the dog. Or she's like, mm -hmm. I'm only like trying so hard so I can save my dog. <laughs> like, that was so true. Um, I agree, too, because I, I saw some people discuss how um, like Taylor Adams is also one of those writers, kind of like Riley Sager, where they write a lot of female protagonists. And I know sometimes people have issues with like, you know, male writers always writing female protagonists, but I would agree that Taylor Adams does write pretty good, like badass 
female heroines. Like, I don't really have any issues with the way that he writes women in his books. Like, I think yeah. she's badass and awesome. So, um, so that's cool. I know the I kind of wanted the delivery person to become a kind of hero. Yeah, I was so confused when I was reading that scene because for some reason I thought like the police had actually shown up or something. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, wait, like, because <laughs> I thought it said he was like in police custody. And then it was like he was killing the delivery person like a second later. And I was like, wait, what is going on? And then I realized he was like he was pretending to be the police to like lure him in or something. Right. Yeah. Like That was very intense. Like rip to the delivery driver. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> um <clears throat> okay and then i also wanted to know like how did you feel about the plot twist or like did you see it coming at all that um the mom jules was like the mom of this man <laughs> like the author dude like did you see that coming at all or i did like, not see that coming that okay. surprised me i mean i think if i thought about it longer i would have but i just like wasn't even thinking yeah. about that i, I think like, had some connection to the house or whatever yeah like, that was one part that I was extremely shocked by. Like, that was the first, like, big plot twist to me where I was like, wait a second, like, what? Like, yeah. it made me want to reread because I'm like, if that's the case, um, like, so, because the book, the, the book made it seem, right, like, his mom was not on board with what he was doing and, like, she wanted him to, like, turn himself in, right? So, mm -hmm. like, so do you think that, um, because <clears throat> you know at the very beginning of the book when she sees someone like outside with like the mask on or whatever and like somebody's at the door stalking her and then Jules calls the police right so like mm -hmm. do you think that like she knew that it was her son like harassing her and that she was trying to like get the police to intervene or do you just think she was like like <laughs> like I don't know do you think she thought maybe it wasn't him and that there was actually danger or something like I just don't know I, I, sh I mean I mean I think she might have known and was like trying to stop him but I don't because she was like constantly telling Emma like okay I'm gonna send you like some self-defense keep the door yeah. locked, like whatever I think maybe she knew on some level but mm -hmm. I don't know she could have not known also but I think it's so creepy that knowing that like he was in the house like for the whole beginning of the book like he was just like yeah. living in the house with her and she had no <laughs> idea oh I know that freaked me out when they were like yeah he's actually been in the house the whole time <laughs> like what <laughs> um yeah, she keeps talking about how creepy his room was. I know. Okay, see that um, about how he, like, knew the layout of the house very well. So I guess that would have been something that would give it away. But, like, I just wasn't thinking in, the, in that way. Like, I don't know. I was just thinking he'd been watching her for a long time, I guess, you know. So, like, I wasn't thinking that that was his literal mom. Um, I know, because then, yeah, why buy a stun gun then? <laughs> If, like, yeah, I don't know. It just seems like she was, like, not on her son's side, which, like, I guess, yeah, why would she be if he was, like, you know, dangerous to her? But, like, it was just that situation was, like, what? Mm -hmm. um, I also thought, too, like, so with that, like, plot twist about um, Emma's, what was it, her husband, Sean, right? Like, he was actually, like, alive. Like, mm -hmm. was that something that shocked you or was that something that you saw coming at all? I think not until there was a particular thing that the author said Mm -hmm. He was like, the only thing you've created, you destroyed or something like that. And so that made me think that the person that actually died was a kid, not her husband. Yeah. Um, but that was surprising to me how that all happened. I thought maybe they both died together, but. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know. I feel like that was the only, like one of the only choice in the book that I did see coming because at the beginning of the book, when she's talking about Sean, it was like she was talking with like a lot of regret, but it never like specifically said that he died. Like I noticed that. So I was like, oh, maybe he's still alive. Like I just had it in the back of my head the whole time that like Sean might be alive. But then even when she was like talking to the police and that one thing when they were talking about grief and how she's recently experienced a loss or whatever, then I was like, oh, maybe he died. Like I was starting to think like maybe he did. But then at the end when it was revealed that he didn't, I was like, oh, okay. Like I kind of thought that. So like that was the only aspect of the book that I kind of saw coming but also like I didn't see it coming that they had had a kid and then mm -hmm. the kid was the one who ended up dying because like that was like whoa that was so heartbreaking I yeah. like that whole chapter where that car crash was revealed I was just like I couldn't breathe I know that like that's what I mean that was really um rough mm -hmm. <laughs> um yeah that's interesting. Yeah, I feel like this book had so many um, surprising moments towards the end that I was just like trying to keep up with like all of the reveals. But I think for me, like the biggest 
choice that I was the most shocked by in this book was that Jules was the mom. Like, I don't know why I just did not see that coming. And Mm -hmm. it was just like, oh my gosh, like what? And then of course there was also the twist that like Deke was like involved or like Deke was kind of like the mastermind to this Mm -hmm. whole thing. Um, I was curious, like, how did you feel about that twist? And also like when it's kind of revealed that like Deke is like the author of this story that we've been Mm -hmm. reading and not the other guy, like, how did you feel about that? Like, were you shocked by that one too? Yeah, I mean, I had suspected Deke from the beginning of being involved, but the fact that he was the actual author, that mm. surprised me. I was not expecting that. <laughs> Same. Oh my gosh. Like, I, I I, agree that I was like, I was thinking that Deke would have some kind of involvement just because he was so shady from the beginning. And, you know, I just thought it was obvious that he would be involved in some mm. way. But I agree that like, I don't know why I didn't think for a second that this other dude wasn't the author of the book that we were reading. Like mm-hmm. what? Because then it, it almost like makes you change your, like how you think of it because you think that this guy is writing himself to be right. like like masculine, like alpha male and sigma male or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's like, it's actually Deke writing him in that way. So like, that was kind of like, whoa, what? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was also a moment where I was kind of questioning it when he kills the delivery driver and she says something like, that she didn't think he meant to do that and i was like oh maybe he's not like as good of a murderer as we thought but then i was just like okay well he he's he's writing very like differently from what's happening he's unreliable so i was like i guess that makes sense but yeah it definitely makes sense that it could because it was deke writing it yeah (laughs) i know and like uh yeah the way that um this guy like wasn't really much of a killer at all yeah like Mm -hmm. you're saying so like of course he's gonna like take things a lot harder because he wasn't usually like doing that um yeah and then yeah how did you feel about the twist um (laughs) when emma's at the police station and deke's like calling in he's like i need you to go do a wellness check on uh, on this girl that's like in the river or whatever and they're like yeah she's here (laughs) I loved that. That was so funny. And they're like, hello, sir. <laughs> I'm like, how dare Taylor Adams just end it there? I'm like, I need more answers. Like, what? Because yeah. then I'm like, does Deke continue this pursuit of, like, trying to kill her? Or is he just like, fuck, like, I'm fucked. Mm-hmm. You know, because she went to the police, essentially. So he's he's found out, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was wild. <laughs> I know my only thing with the ending of this book was that um, for me, it felt like the ending of this book was like this character had like nine lives or something. Cause I was like, what is going on? It was like, there was a scene where she gets like shot or something in the, mm-hmm. I think I was like shot in the stomach. And then in like the next scene, she got like stabbed by his sword or something. And then in the next scene, she's like, she got poison or something. And then he like threw her in the lake she or threw her in the water. She's like drowning. And then somehow she like lived. I'm like, yeah what i thought when she was drowning that was it i was like okay well she, i know how does no she do that with the backpack of rocks on her and she's like drugged yeah <laughs> that's what that was my only thing was i was like how do these characters keep coming back to life like mm-hmm. same with deke there was like so many moments where it's like she stabbed him in the face with like a screwdriver or something and then she like just put tape on it to like stop <laughs> the bleeding. and then like a few scenes later it's like he he died in another way somehow right it's like she saw the guy killing him and then the next scene he's like still alive i'm like How? what <laughs> i don't didn't de kill himself i don't know i'm i was so confused by he something did. he did um the like samurai death where he like falls on his own sword oh yes the scene that i was like how is he alive like what is going on um yeah i agree the star of the show was the dog leika and that dog also had nine lives i was like oh my god she's like pulling like poison out of its mouth like like, dumping salt down the dog's throat like what the heck um i know i i do wonder um like yeah that scene was also like really sad by the way of when she's like drowning and she thinks like she sees her daughter again or whatever Mm -hmm. that was like oh that was almost like emotional for me at the end um but how did you or how would you have felt about the book if Emma did die at the end by like drowning at the end and that was kind of like her last thing like would you have felt differently about the story or like how would that ending have affected you I think I would have been okay with that if if, like the dog lived (laughs) she was doing it all but I do I like the way that it ended and her actually having like a good happy ending Mm -hmm. I prefer that but I don't think I would have been mad if she had died that way and like gone to see her daughter 
I would agree. Yeah. Cause I think as much as I, you know, cause her coming back so many times was like a little far fetched for me, but like, I didn't mind it because it's like, it's a thriller and it's fun and it's like, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I do think if she had just died at the end, that would have been like, Oh shit. <laughs> like, yeah. That would have been kind of sad, but also like maybe realistic. Like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, cause I, I did see a lot of people in the discord saying that they would have preferred that to be like the final scene of her mm -hmm. like kind of drowning and thinking she sees her daughter and then, that being it but like I don't know I also feel like that would have changed um the tone at the end of the book in a big way you know because like right. that would have been a really depressing note if she would have right died. And the whole book was like so fun mm -hmm. I feel like that ending wouldn't have fit yeah really yeah oh I know that's right too um I forgot in the epilogue she like gets to back with her husband or something right yeah and he's like I'll meet you halfway I'm leaving right now it's like oh I know soft shit <laughs> yes yeah, I agree. Um, it was great. I really, I really did like the ending of this book, though. Like, I didn't have any issues um, <clears throat> with that. I was wondering too, because I know we kind of talked about like our thoughts about the ending and stuff. But was there anything you thought was going to happen towards the end of the book that like didn't happen, or were like there any theories that you had that like didn't end up panning out that you had? I think at one point I thought maybe what was it, Jules? that was the mom's name yeah I thought she was not actually dead oh yeah I know she died in the most like random way I feel yeah. like. like all these other characters have like nine lives and she yeah. just like, suffocated by like her rope or something so I thought she wasn't fully dead and like maybe she would want to get revenge <laughs> but yeah. I guess that was the only thing I was like thinking of towards the end that's so true. I wonder, like, with Jules' character, like, <laughs> that seemed like the most, like, lame way to go out or something. Like, she just accidentally, or he just accidentally tied the ropes a little too tight or something, and she, like, suffocated or something. Like, what the heck? Yeah, that was, that was interesting. That was a good point. Hmm. Yeah, I also thought that um, scene towards the end was really um, interesting and intense when she's, like, literally being poisoned in like the hospital room or whatever and he's like writing up her suicide note and she's like carving into her arm yeah. <laughs> Deke killed me <laughs> I'm like what the heck it was very um very intense I know have you read survive the night mm -mm. no it, it kind of did remind me a little bit like the campiness definitely reminded me of um that yeah interesting okay well then one of my um final questions that i like to ask in these live shows is that like if you had any um you know book recommendations or movie or tv show like recommendations that you think if someone enjoyed this book that like they could like this other thing because of you know similar vibes or like similar plot or like whatever mm -hmm. reasons um would you have any like recommendations like that or yeah the only thing i could think of when i was reading this book i kept thinking of the movie hush <gasps> i was gonna say that <laughs> I love that movie and I feel like it had the same kind of like tense someone is like stalking outside of the house yes. and the main character is like really smart and able to stay alive I love that movie so yes. much <laughs> oh my god I was literally just about to say hush <laughs> yeah if you guys haven't watched hush um highly recommend so freaking good it actually follows this protagonist who's um, she's deaf, right? Mm -hmm. And then she starts to notice, like, she's, like, talking to her friend on, like, a FaceTime or something and then sees somebody, like, behind her in the window. And it's this whole, like, very tense movie of this guy, like, trying to break into the house, essentially. And, oh, my gosh, I want to rewatch re Hush so bad. Um, it's been a couple years since mm -hmm. I've seen it, but I would so agree. It's very, very, very Hush vibes. Yeah, for badass women, they never learn, for mm -hmm. sure. I can see it. I can see it. Um, I would also agree with that. Like, it's kind of like Scream in the way yeah. that it feels very like meta kind of and campy like Scream. Mm -hmm. um, so I would definitely agree. Um, I would also say too, um, oh, I saw Justin said Panic Room. I haven't seen Panic Room, mm -hmm. but um, I've heard people say this as well. Um, but I think too, like it did kind of remind me, like I was saying like Riley Sager in a little bit because it's like a male author writing a female protagonist and then like a very intense, just kind of like high stakes situation. Like, I don't know, it definitely reminded me a little bit of Riley Sager's writing, but also just no exit. Like I could just easily compare this to no exit because of the, uh, you know, like the atmosphere, the way it all takes place within one night. It's very high stakes. Like it definitely reminds me of a lot of no exit. Um, yeah, the movie Coherence, um, I've seen that movie. 
I don't know if I could see the connection right away. I'd have to yeah. think. <laughs> well, oh. you're just recommending the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, watch it. <laughs> um, you're next. That's one that I haven't seen, but I, I think I can see how that would be. Um, that would be similar. Very interesting. Oh, okay. The Glass House or Misery. Mm. I think I can see that too. Yeah. Bodies, bodies, bodies. Bodies, bodies, bodies is great. Yeah. Like, love, love, love that movie. Um, okay. Got it. No connection. Just a recommendation. <laughs> got it oh yeah true halloween because the killer never dies mm -hmm. yeah and kind of thing that's that's really true i think halloween is another one of those fun kind of like meta slasher mm -hmm. movies so interesting yeah i agree i wasn't expecting this book to be as like <laughs> kind of like unhinged and campy as it was mm -hmm. but um i don't know i had a great time i'm glad we all had a great time <laughs> um okay i think that might be all that I had. Did you have any like final thoughts or any other things you were burning to talk about with this book? Um, not with this one, but do you think I should still read No Exit having watched the movie? Uh, I kind of want to, but like, I don't know yeah. if it would be like not as good of an experience. <laughs> How long has it been since you watched the movie? Like, has it been a while or is it like I forever? think I watched it like right when it came out. Okay. So I can't remember when that was. Yeah. I mean, I would say it's definitely still worth it to read because, like, as far as I remember, um, there is a little bit of a difference between the mm -hmm. book and the movie for No Exit. So it's not going to be, like, completely like you've seen it before, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I think it will offer some um, of a difference there. But, yes, I do think it's – yeah, I do think the book was better, in my opinion, too, than mm -hmm. um, the movie was. Like, I liked the movie pretty fine, but – um but I, I do think it would be worth it because No Exit is just so fun. And it's it definitely has like a similar vibe to this. So I really do think if you like this, I think you would really like No Exit as well. Um, so yeah, <laughs> everybody's very passionate in the chat. Yeah, everyone is saying yes, so I will. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I think it would be great. Um, oh, this was a cool question too. Would you want this to be adapted into a film? Mm. I think that would be very interesting. Yeah, I, it would be really interesting to see how they do like the the book that he's right like the manuscript if they would like sh show the difference like you would see it from like the book's point of view but then like you'd see the real point of view I think that would be interesting I know that's what I mean like how would they do something like that because I'm like half of the like entertainment value of this book for me was that going back and forth between yeah. the two but, like I'd be really curious to see how they would even be able to pull something like that off with this mm -hmm. um yeah that is very interesting um Oh yeah, I saw people saying to the the attic storyline in the movie. Yeah, that's not at all in the book. So like, there is a little bit of a difference there, um, for sure. And yeah, hairpin bridge is not. <laughs> you can you can see it. I promise <laughs> you're not missing much there. Um, I know. I do wonder <laughs> if he would have the sword in the movie. <laughs> like he's got to. The sword is like the star. You know. Mm -hmm. um, interesting. Yeah, that would be very, I'd be very intrigued if they made this into a movie, how yeah. they would do that. But, um, but okay, I think that just about wraps up all of the questions that I had for this live show. Um, thank you so much to everybody for reading along with us this month. This was a really fun discussion. I feel like this book was just really uh, entertaining to read and entertaining to talk about. And um, thank you all so much for reading along with us this month. Also, thank you so much to Riley for joining me. Thank this you for so having fun. me. <laughs> I feel like I've been watching your channel like literally for years and I've just like wanted to collaborate with you in some way. So like, this is really cool to finally like make this happen. You yeah, know? same. Oh my gosh. And um, once again, if you're watching and you're not familiar with Riley's channel, her channel will be linked down below so you can go and check it out. And um, yeah, thank you all so much for joining us. Um, in the month of June, we are going to be reading The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth. So hopefully that um, will also be a good experience for everyone. And um, yeah, thank you for joining us. Have a good rest of your Sunday. We're going to head out. Bye.